I want to welcome all of His Glory Nation as we continue our series in the book of Isaiah. Tonight we'll be in Isaiah 11, and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west and north to south to be the true teacher and the living Word of God, which is Christ our Lord. Okay, let's get in where the prophet Isaiah is going to talk about the Messiah and His coming, and this also gives us a flavor of the millennial reign fulfilling the Davidic covenant. As you can see, that supernatural things are going to happen uh, with peace on earth that can only be done through the Messiah. Let's get right into it, 11.1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem, a stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of its roots. So this has a many meanings to this. Obviously, the root of, of, of Jesse is King David, so it would be through the messianic line of uh, David, the Messiah, where there will be a king forever, fulfilling the Davidic covenant. Um, this is also representing the cutting off of Israel for their hardness, and out of the, the stump comes a branch or a root, and that branch and that root is none other than the Christ, and that branch also is Christ opening up the covenant, his covenant, the, the only covenant, the way, the truth, and the life that narrow is the gate, to all Gentiles and all people across the world. So we are those who are Gentiles, no matter your, your, your um, tongue, race, or color, whatever it may be, by accepting Jesus Christ, you are the branch. You've been grafted in because of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. He's coming to save the world. And through our heart giving up to him, saying, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. I can't do it alone. I will be obedient to you, and I want to turn away from the old way and be born again to be a new creation and be obedient to you. And that is being grafted in to become children of the Most High God. No longer are we creations of God. We are children of the Most High God and have eternal life through the Messiah. Verse 2, the Spirit of the Lord will sh shall rest upon him. God's Spirit will be on his Son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, because he will be God in the second head. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, so he'll have all that, the spirit, the Holy Spirit working in, in, in um, unison with the Trinity. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He's going to come back with justice on the earth. We're talking now, again, the second coming of Jesus Christ, where he comes as an, uh, an iron. He comes with speaking the word, as, as it's going to show here. Uh, his, his delight is the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor des, 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 decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor. It'll be righteousness. It's not what the world sees. It's not what you hear. It's the truth, and the truth will set you free, as the Scripture says. And the only truth is Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and he is the judge of all. The white throne judgment will be after this millennial reign. Christ is coming down in righteousness and decide with uh, equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. So this is not a figure of speech. Again, in Revelation, he comes with a rod. He comes with a sword, speaking it out. The two-edged sword speaks the evil and, and, and does away with the wicked. Justice will come. The fleshly justice will come the first time. And then eternity uh, and the white throne will be the thousand year once the thousand years and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. The books will be opened and the names removed, and those who denied the Christ will be gone, thrown into the lake of fire. And the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Again, Isaiah prophesizing exactly what the apostle John saw in the book of Revelation. This is exactly what is going to happen. This is not a figure of speech. Verse five: Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins. The belt, remember the belt is, is, is of truth in the, the, uh, the, the, the full armor in Ephesians 6.10. Um, and his faithfulness will be the belt of his waist. Faithfulness, our God is faithful, his word is true. We obey, obey him, he is a faithful God. We humble ourselves and repent of our sins, he is a faithful God. And he loves us so much that he protects us and he knows the number of hairs counted on our head. Verse 6, now this was where we know it's the millennial reign, because this has never happened since the beginning of uh, the Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. This is where God uh, intended for this to go. And another verse that shows this is um, uh, Isaiah 65, 
where you're going to see that even a child of a little age that dies uh, at 100 will be considered a, a premature death. So obviously in eternity there is no death. So 65 and uh, 11 are showing the millennial reign because there will be earth dwellers that somehow make it through the tribulation and they'll procreate and they will have generations after that. There will be peace and there will be no sin, but they will have sin nature in them. And at the end of the thousand year reign, Satan is let loose for a season. And that's for their testing because they did not have the temptations that we have had with Satan loose and his demons on the earth. And they're going to get a t taste of that and they rebel. Believe it or not, they rebel. So that would be the procreating of children, uh, of generations of earth dwellers that make it through the tribulation in the millennial reign. Uh, so the wolf will also shall dwell with the lamb. One of the most misquoted uh, verses in the Bible is that the lion will lay down with the lamb. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the lion will lay down with the lamb. It says the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. Um, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. So no fear, the wolf will not attack the lamb, the leopard will not attack the goat, and a little child shall not have fear because of the peace of righteousness uh, of our Messiah, the King of kings and Lord of hosts, is fulfilling the millennial reign, the Davidic covenant, on his throne in Jerusalem, ru ruling the whole world. Verse 7, And the cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So they'll go back to a diet of plants. They won't need the meat, the blood anymore. This will be a whole unique system. Um, the nursing child so, shall play by the cobra's hole. So again, by the, the, there's no, no uh, fear of, of, of death because of the, the, the cobra. The cobra will not sh uh, spark its venom. Venom is a defense mechanism of a snake to, to, uh, to, to, to either go on an offensive or a defensive mechanism and they won't need to that to do that because there will be peace. There will not be a um, there will not be battles anymore. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. There fell sh there they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, meaning the mountain of of Zion, uh, Moriah, and the the, the, the Mount of Olives, the, the the holy trinity of mountains in Jerusalem and all through the world. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Everyone will know the, the knowledge of the one Lord, Jehovah, the God, through Messiah, Jesus Christ. And the whole world will, will have one world government. Remember we talked about in um, Isaiah 9 that he, he will be mighty counselor. He'll have the government on his shoulders. Yes, there will be a one world government, but it will be Christ that ushers in the one world government for eternity. As the waters cover the sea, here's another explanation showing you that this is the millennial reign. Because when we know eternity, there is no more sea anymore. There's no more sun, there's no more moon, there's no more sea. Because sea has always been an idiom throughout the Bible, an expositional constancy of being evil. Um, and so that uh, in eternity, there will be no more sea. Uh, but here we clearly see the, wa the waters cover the sea. Verse 10, And the day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. That is the Messiah literally being in the, the, the bloodline of Judah and in the bloodline of King David. As God said, I have an everlasting covenant to my, my, my beloved David that there will be someone from his uh, um, bloodline always in charge uh, uh, as a king of kings forever. His kingship will never end. Who shall stand as a banner to the people? For the Gentiles shall seek him. The Gentiles, all the Gentiles will, will come to him that will, that, that will have acceptance. Jew or Gentile alike are no more. We are one body. It's called the church. And his resting place shall be glorious. And his resting place shall be glory. His kavod will be absolutely glorious. So I mentioned the word kavod here, it shall be glorious. Again, kavod means the literal essence of God, the Shekinah glory. So what would be resting place will be surrounded with his glory of peace and love. What a day that will be. 1111, Isaiah. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt and Pathros and Cush and Elam and Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. So this is at least a dual reference. This is... Uh, can reference the 537 BC where Cyrus was given the decree that the remnant could go back to Israel. 
and this is also the time of, of dry bones where, the, where people are coming back to the nation of Israel in the last days. And uh, that is actually ha happening as we speak. It started with, with Ethiopia, then the Russian Jews. Now Jews are coming all over the, United, all over the world going back to the native Israel. And that's what the Lord is prophesizing in 11.11. In that day, um, it shall happen. And also talking about the day of the millennial, that they'll all come in to the glory of the Lord in his, in his Israel. Again, it's the remnant, only the remnant, he says, to recover the remnant of his people who are left. Remnant usually use, means 10. Remnant is um, a, a small group. Those are the only ones who accepted the Messiah as Lord and Savior. Verse 12, he will set up a banner for the nations and he will send, assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So he's going to reunite Israel and Judah. There will be no more uh, split of the nations. There will be one world government talking about the millennial reign. It's also talking about the, when, when they came back um, in, the, in the land in May 14th, 1948, and as it is today, there is no more Ephraim or uh, uh, Israel versus Judah. It's one nation, the nation of Israel. Also, the envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. Again, Ephraim is, is a, a, um, um, not only uh, of a, a tribe, of, of the half the half a portion of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh, but that was also a reference to Samaria, where they split under Jeroboam and Rehoboam, where they were f worshiping f false idols, and they, the ten tribes split to, to the two tribes, and the remnant of the ten tribes came back to Israel. There's this misconception of, you know, the ten lost tribes because they were Israel. It wasn't cut and dry. The remnant of those ten tribes came back to Judah, came back to worship the Lord in Jerusalem and humble themselves because what Jeroboam was doing was apostasy, was blasphemy, bringing up false gods and false idols. He's saying they'll be united. There will be no more uh, friction between them. God is creating a, a, a beautiful peace together once and for all. And Israel hasn't seen that peace. You can just see the news every day. Israel's always under attack. But they shall fly down from the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall lay their hand on Edom and Moab. Edom, the Edomites, Moab is in uh, Ammon, or in Jordan, uh, and the people of Ammon shall obey them. Ammon is the cap capital of Jordan, so those two areas of Jordan. Edom is uh, the Edomites uh, from Esau, as lineage. They're down um, uh, of the of the uh, Dead Sea. The Lord will utterly destroy destroy the tongue of the Sea of Egypt, and with His mighty wind He shall shake his fist over the river and strike it into it in the seven streams and make men cross dry shot. So he's going to take that and most likely the Nile and, and, and strike it and they'll, they'll be able to walk across and dry. And we close out in verse 16, there will be a highway, be a highway for the remnant of his people, a highway. Isaiah is always talking about this highway and that highway is, is the path to the Lord through the Messiah and the remnant of his people who will, will be left from Assyria and as it was for Israel in the day that they came up from the land of Egypt. So they have a highway, the highway through the Red, uh, the de or through the Red Sea when Moses parted it with God's blessing. And also when um, uh, Joshua crossed the, the Jordan, it was dry, dried up by the, the, the glory of God and his almighty power. And this is also showing that God is going to do that, open up the highway and bring his people in, the remnant of his people, the remnant that accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will reign with him forever in the millennial reign fulfilling the Davidic covenant. We pray that Isaiah 11 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you. Till next time in Isaiah 12. God bless.